know what you came here for So don't hit me with the shot We ain't got all night, but I'ma make it feel timeless Kiss the right places, so you know where my mind been Kiss the right places, baby, you know what the vibe is I can tell you want this ride as bad as I do As bad as I do Hello, hello, welcome everybody to the E-Spot with Camille. I am so excited for today's guest. We all grew up watching her, whether you grew up watching her on the Facts of Life or Living Single or even behind the scenes. She's worked on some of the top films, Keenan and Keenan and Kill, I'll have to fix that later, and so many more different um, shows. I'm sure we're all watching right now one of her Christmas movies. So I'm so excited to have Mrs. Kim Fields here in the building, well, virtually, yes. <laughs> here in the East Spot. So excited to have you. Thanks again for being my guest. Tell us, what have you been up to during this whole pandemic of being shut down? Yes. Oddly enough, the last thing I have felt is being shut down. You know, um, I've, I've been blessed to be very, very busy. Um, and uh, lots of, um, you know, like a lot of people having uh, lots of huge um, 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 explosions of creativity, of um, your hustle, uh, rest. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's been a, a number of things going on uh, during this time, uh, working as an actor, as a director and producer, as an entrepreneur, uh, so, so it's it's been very exciting, and then in the midst of that, making sure that I'm taking care of myself um, because you can't pour from an empty cup. So uh, that's not my quote. I saw it on on some on somewhere on on IG. I think I saw it from uh, Russell Simmons. I don't know if it's his or not, but regardless, that's where I got it from. Right. But the sentiment still holds true. You cannot pour from an empty cup, and so making sure that within all of the busy, um, there is you know just even if it's ten seconds of just catching my breath. So right. it's been a busy and wonderful and wonderful time Ooh. in a lot. Of course, in a lot of ways, it's been a devastating time. Of course. So many people have been through so much loss and grief and just the stress of working multiple hats now. But um, let's go back a little bit. I want to I want to share a little bit how you got started in the industry, just to see what the big differences you've noticed pre-COVID even, as opposed to how you're filming now post-COVID. So, but let's start from the beginning with little good times. <laughs> like what, so how did you get your start as a child actor? What was your first big thing? Mm -hmm. So my first big gig or my first gig, um, which turned out to be a big gig, uh, was uh, the Mrs. Butterworth syrup commercial. And I was seven years old. Um, from there, I started doing a lot of commercials uh, for Barbie, you know, the, the Barbie Corvette, uh, Frosted Flakes, Kraft Barbecue Sauce, lots of lots of commercials. Yeah. And then I landed. How, do you remember as a kid how you felt doing all those different things? Or you know, I, like do. Kind of um, I, I do. I felt um, very. I didn't really understand or know. I did not understand. I didn't know the concept of blessed at the time. Um, so, you know, as a kid, I think you kind of um, boil it down to I'm lucky, or you know that that this was this was something that was for me and and that sort of thing. Um, I always I always felt like I was having fun. I never felt um, any of like the negative child star stories or working actor. Um, uh, as a kid, you know, those, those stories that certainly those experiences exist and that they are, you know, a very um, difficult and challenging part of many people's testimonies. That's just not mine. Um, I never felt burdened. Uh, it was always just a really great experience. Um, and, and do you think maybe because your mom, Chip Fields, was also an actress that she made sure to kind of put it in a way where it didn't feel like work, but more was fun and just getting to play pretend? Yeah, my, I mean, I still knew that I was working and my mom always made sure that I was professional. Um, but in child speak, that means I was kind, I was respectful. Uh, and so I, I definitely felt like I had a childhood as well. Um, I interacted with other kids. My mom had um, would do plays and have an acting school and things like that. So I was around other kids, even though I was an only child for a long time. But I, I feel like my <laughs> I do feel child, like, so. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. But I, I definitely do have feel a like sister. My mom, <laughs> right? But my mom really uh, 
definitely guided me in terms of making sure, like I said, I was professional. Um, I wasn't a bratty kid. Um, she made sure that she always knew that she um, was still raising a child uh, and not a child star or a, a, a child star in the making or anything like that. Um, and my experiences just were not negative in that regard. Now, that's not to say that I didn't have you know, some challenges and difficulties. Okay. Um, but I, I felt like I owed it to my village and to my mom and my aunt who really, you know, were the, the guiding forces for me um, to be able to find ways to work through and navigate through the challenging waters and the difficulties that are just life. Yeah, even if, of life even. <laughs> even if you're not in front of the camera. Um, and so, so, you know, um, puberty and all sorts of things that can be a challenge. Uh, like I said, even if you're not famous, um, but they, they really did help me and my village was was definitely there and continues to be there for me. So even as I evolved into, you know, from a teenager to a young adult, going to college, a young woman transitioning to Facts of Life, um, the guest starring roles in the TV movies that I did uh, all along the 80s and the, the 90s, you know, just um, making sure that I, 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 I knew the craft. Mm -hmm. My mom always said, you know, just make sure you're just not some cute kid who can just kind of spout out some one-liners because then what happens if you're not a cute kid anymore? Mm -hmm. And so making sure that I knew the craft and then knew every aspect about my craft uh, certainly helps me keep, stay um, working um, and, 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 and thriving, you know, in, in the industry right now. You mentioned, though, um, the difference now between um, working and things like that pre-COVID and, and post-COVID, because I have obviously done both. Yeah. And of course, there's an enormous amount of protocols that are in place now. Um, and certain things, I think, as an actor, what gets a little tricky is when you are rehearsing with a mask all the time and so and working with other actors and so all you're seeing is the eyes and then when it's time to start filming you take the mask off and it's like oh oh that's what we're gonna do oh that's what we're, oh okay got you so you know that that um that part of the process uh is is a bit different you know yeah. and uh and even as a director when you're uh, doing rehearsals on Zoom, and and what is that like? No, wait, back up. You're the first <laughs> one that has been able to chat about this, so please share yeah. what it's like from both sides of that. Sure, what sure. is it like with Zooms? <laughs> sure. So, so rehearsing uh, on Zoom um, is a little. Um, Mm, it, it can be a little uh, unsettling sometimes because most of the time, you know, we are very critical of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so um, you don't usually get to see yourself in real time working mm -hmm. and, and doing the dialogue and interacting with your fellow actors. Normally there's, you know, monitors off to the side and you can't see that. Uh, and so when you're rehearsing on Zoom, obviously, you, you know, you can see <laughs> your your work at that time. And so it can start to inform you or, or make you a little self-conscious or, you know, make you come outside of yourself to watch as opposed to being as present as possible. So right now, for example, for those of you who are not actors, um, I'm engaged in this conversation with you. I'm looking at you on my screen, but every now and then, of course, I'm aware I can see me too. So then my eyes cut over like, oh, are my braids okay? Is my hat okay? Oh, right. this, oh, should I powder my nose? You know, and you start coming outside of yourself looking in. Ah, that's a very good point. Yeah. It takes away from my engagement with you in that moment. So, you know, as an actor, that, that kind of thing can be can be tricky. And then when you get on on set and there's the masks and everything, your crew, everyone has a mask and things, lots of sanitizing going on, um, how you social distance until you're actually on camera and then you have your 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 um social distance kind of shrinks away um so it's a lot of of, of different new components yeah you know. mm -hmm. it's got to be tricky not only as a director as an actor but just having to wear both hats of protecting your crew and cast but also yeah. wanting that moment on camera to really show but yes still have to remember all the roles and protocols like that's a lot right to right at the same time now 
Yeah, it is a lot to keep in mind and yet feel very seamless and organic and as if none of those things exist. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely grateful for every company and every production company and network who has, you know, really been very, very diligent about the stringent protocols in place and putting stringent protocols in place. So you at least don't have to factor in fear, I guess, um, when you're trying to do that work um, because, you know, I'm, I'm safe and that there are people that are there to watch my back to make sure that I, I remain safe in this environment. Right. Because it's a lot of trust with acting on set anyway. So to add in that extra element, it's really right. important. Um, mm -hmm. I have to ask you these questions just because I'm thinking back on the fact that you are a child actor. You've worked as a director on some great productions that are for children. And it's been brought up several times, the differences in the sense of how they're sexualizing our kids way too much, you know, in the, some of the shows now and just seeing how you came from such a wholesome shows like Good mm -hmm. Times and mm -hmm. um, Facts of Life. And even with Living Single in that sense where now a lot of the kids shows they're growing up way too quickly or being exposed way too quickly. And it's mm -hmm. a bigger difference, I think, with um, films made towards black kids and or I just think of some of the past shows, how it was so much about trying to drive us to inspire us. And even with good times and facts of life, like I identified with 2D because I wore braces. I wasn't a predominantly white school. So it made me, there was someone that looked like me and reflected me. And now I try to show my daughter shows and they're cussing at their parents or they're talking back or you know, there's like that, you know, even like Sky Jackson is one of my daughter's favorite actresses and she's great, but there's times I'm like, you know, you can't get away with that at home. Right. But so how do you, um, how do you make sure that with, even with your own children, the kind of films and things that are being put out there are reflecting us in a good manner or even pushing that narrative forward that mm -hmm. even with Regine, um, Regine Carter, it's just, it was empowering. It was in. It was inspiring, and as opposed to yeah, I feel sure. like. Well, I think for, for me, first of all, I don't limit the content that I'm a part of, um, mm -hmm. just to reflect either my own values or beliefs or sign of the times or anything like that. I, I, I'm a, I'm an actor. I'm a director. I'm a producer. When I'm working. And so in that regard, I go after good content. I go after intriguing content. I go after what type of work I haven't done before so that it stays fresh for me and that my passion is still, you know, just as, as lit and on fire um, for what I want to do so that I'm not just doing the same old stuff that I've done and people um, start to come to expect that from me. I'm known for saying expect the unexpected um, because after 40 something years in the industry, if I'm not doing stuff to keep it fresh and popping just for myself, child, you better put me down, <laughs> put me out to pasture. So I'm definitely of the mindset of doing things that are different and challenging and intriguing for you. And not just as a creative, you know, um, if there are ways to um, do that in whatever field you're in, whatever your career is, whatever it may be. Um, as a parent, uh, of course, we monitor very heavily, you know, what our kids are exposed to, all the um, parental controls uh, are, you know, in play in terms of YouTube or um, Internet access and things of that nature. Um, the amount of social media access they have and, and quite honestly do not have. Um, so we're, we're very on top of it, you know, and making sure that our kids are not raised by the media or the video games or, or those sorts of things. They still can enjoy it very much so. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, turn it off if you feel like your, your, your child shouldn't watch something or in that moment be able to walk them through, like you said, okay, so you know this is one of our favorite actresses and this channel is safe, but just know some of the ways their interaction, that's not gonna work here. They're trapped in a script and you're trapped in this home. <laughs> so, you know, they're trapped in a script with a pretend family. You're trapped in this family with your real family. And so understanding those things so that even if a curse word happens in a movie or something like that, um, that's PG-13 or whatever it may be, or even one of the animated um, family movies, 
you know, um, there are times where the seven-year-old will cover my eyes <laughs> because he's like, oh, they're going to pretend that they're going to kiss. I know that they're not going to, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, it is the sign of the times. You know, we are in just like our um, predecessors thought that, you know, things in the 70s and 80s and the 60s, that that was so edgy, 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 edgy. And how dare they? And it was, you know, values out the window, moral compasses broken. Um, but they grew up in maybe the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. And so they had a different dynamic in terms of what was relevant and resonated for them. So, you know, the shows that we may have grew up on or watched may not really resonate at this moment. And then I've got tons of people that tell me, you know, the shows that I that I starred in in the 80s or the 90s, um, that their kids love them. Mm -hmm. So I think you just have to monitor it. But but um, creative uh, uh, energy is creative energy and content is content. And Everybody, from music to streaming to what you read, what you everybody has the ability to do this. Yep, or do that. <laughs> so you yeah. know, after a while, stop complaining. Shut up and turn it. Plain and simple. Very good points. I love it. Well, speaking of, exactly. right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and make sure you like, subscribe, and tune in next week. Absolutely. Have a great holiday.